G'day, g'day, and welcome back to another episode of the Bradley J Driver Experience. We're here for 063. We're moving. It's great. We're face to face. We're in the flesh, and that's how we love it. The energy is always higher when you're face to face with a guest, and that carries through the mics, it carries through to the AirPods, or wherever you guys are tuning into this here today. And I've got an absolutely cracker guest. I've been teeing this one up for a little while now. He deserves an intro, so I'm going to roll it from the top. He's a former back rower in the NRL and Super League. Now retired and a personality within the game itself, but host of a podcast known as The Scope. You may know him as The Skipper, ladies and gentlemen, from your home, your car, or wherever you are. Give a very warm welcome to Mr. Justin Oro. How are you, brother? Jeez, mate, that's a good intro. I need to yeah. up the ante now. You right. make me feel bad that I don't, I don't give my guests that sort of intro. Bro, I'm just rolling off the top. That's just, grouse, bro. Just spitting fire, bro. It's freestyle. It's freestyle. Unreal. Unreal. And it was clean. It was smooth. I love it. it was, yeah. I love it. Well done, bro. We're, um... Bro, very grateful to be here in your home. Thank you for inviting us in. It's um, it's always good to get face to face with guys like you. I quite find myself, you know, as a fan of footy, as a fan of the NRL. I've been a Roosters boy my whole life, so there's yep. been some good years in these last few years. Yep. But I find I'm probably more intrigued with guys post footy and yep. outside of the game. And I think that just comes from a level of curiosity to see how you guys transition out of footy. And there's that cliche that seems to run true. You know, that footy's the best days of your life. You hear a lot of mm. old players talk about that, you know, the, yeah. the generation before, sort of your generation, and really interested to hear whether you think that's true or not. Yeah, well, I'm pretty lucky, man, because I, I tell people this all the time. I've got a couple of good mates, uh, like you said, that have struggled life after footy. Yeah. And they, like, sort of struggle to find purpose. Like, when I first got back, I, I did a podcast with Ice. I think a lot of people know this that listen to my yeah. podcast. and. And he comes, he, he was just starting YKTR Sports. And he goes, look, you know, I know you love your sports. Um, you love talking. To, mainly, like, when I first started, it was just start, I was supposed to just th- talk about uh, American sports. Yep. He goes, just come on and do some stuff with us. So for me, like, I actually don't feel like I've really finished footy because I'm always around the footy boys. Like, yeah. that's a big part of, like, when, when a lot of the boys finish up, like, they miss that camaraderie of being around Can the imagine. group. And now I get to fucking chat to the boys all the time. I get, like, you know, get to do things like this. So... Yeah. It's just been a fun ride and I've uh, been just trying to keep myself busy. I, for, for advice for a lot of guys that finish, one of the big things for me, I went through a bit of a rut for about three to six months when I just wasn't doing anything. Like yeah. Training for me has been massive. Yeah, um, so just course. a lot of exercise, man. A lot of exercise because your body becomes so conditioned to, to yeah. doing that all the time that when you stop, I think that's when a lot of guys get in the rut. And phys- like physically, you know the endorphins that come from training. Mm. Like I've just recently went through that. I had a week and a half off training. And fuck, man, yeah. I was wondering why I was stressed every day. Yeah, bro. Wondering why I was running around like a stress head, man. Because when you're not getting that, especially when you're used to doing it in a community, like we run a bit and we've got a crew that run together. Yeah, Shout out that. to the Active Boys Run Club. Yeah. What a bunch of lads. What, we might uh, have to do a little, uh, a little get together with collab. the Kitties, Kitties we, Run Club. Yeah. We might have to because yeah. I've seen that you boys have formed a run club yeah. up here on what, East and Sid. Yeah, really. so we, we've got about three different locations and we, we run for about half an hour max and then just have a coffee and a swim together. Right, right? that's yeah. our Sunday yeah. mornings, bro. Yeah. Five Ks into a nice longy B and a swim. How good. But, you know, for me, being away from the, the crew, and we've got a crew of about 30 or 50 that rock up every Sunday now. Yeah. The vibe's yeah. high. When you're not getting the training, and the endorphins, and then you're not around your mates to run, like that killed me for a week and a half, yeah. let alone leaving a career behind you and, and having to find your feet again. So, bro, I love that advice. I love that advice. And one thing that I noticed with you, you know, sometimes the footy boys have got that stigma that that's kind of all there is to them, but you've mm. got to really, you know, and I don't think that's true because I think there's a side to us that we see, and especially with modern day media, there's a side that we're pushed to see. I can see there's a real side to you that is coming out through your podcast and all the content you do that you're quite mindful. You talk about your gratefuls every yeah. day and that's the shit that I love. So dive into that a little bit for us. Yeah, so uh, that's sort of like a new thing that I've been doing this year, but I've always like, I've always prided myself on being pretty positive. Like I always, me and I used to talk this, about this before, like we were sort of like locker room guys, a bit like, you know, how Kempi's doing really well. Yeah. I, I prided myself on being like, being able to speak to all the younger guys all the time, all the older guys. Um, always keeping positive energy within the group, no matter like, you know, how we're playing and whatnot. And then that's sort of just naturally, I think, flowed over to my podcast. Like, and, and what we're trying to do at YKTR Sports, there's so many uh, negative, like not, there's more negative stories than positive when, when, you, when you listen to like, you know, all the main media outlets. So what we try to do is portray all the best stories. We try to put the boys in the best possible light. And hopefully that's coming across by the sounds of it. it, it, it we're, we're doing well is. with it. And um, I'm just trying to go over that vibe. And, 
yeah, this year in particular, after spending some boys uh, some time with the boys over New Year's, uh, uh, I start, started really um, throwing myself into the Gratefuls to, to yeah. start every day. I like, like that, eh? Yeah, it's, uh, I start my pod, podcast with the Grateful as well. Yeah. And... Uh, like I, I, I even try to push it on like all the boys. Like normally, it's taken normally a, a little bit to yeah. get used to it. Yeah. He reckons he's only one grateful a week, which I, I'm, tr- I'm trying to get two <laughs> out of him. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the one. At, I'm happy with the one at the yeah. moment. Hopefully, you know, I can get two or three. I'm keen to hear what are your gratefuls for for the day. Oh, grateful for today. Uh, this is uh, well, so um, we went to we played frisbee this morning. I play frisbee every Friday. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah we play frisbee every Friday with uh, guys that I train with at a gym. We all get together. Yeah. It's like a it's like a day off, but you end up running like three or four k through. It's like it's a good yeah, workout, like it's a good workout. sesh. And then I go down to the like my routine is Friday frisbee, and then I go down to um, Oak Oak Park, which is like a little swimming pool. And there's always like the elderly down there, and my yeah. grateful was the elderly today. So I always like they're always so nice. You know what they I mean? Are. Like I'll go down and I have a chat to them. They're just so happy to be like... It's life some, wisdom, isn't you it? You know, sometimes if you want to speak to like someone our age, they'll yeah. uh, like, especially if it's a chick, like they might be like, oh, what, this guy's trying to hit on me. Yeah. I'm like, well, no, like, I'm going to speak to that 60-year-old lady the same way as I speak to you. It's just yeah. the way that you take it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I love having conversations with the elderly, so... It's funny that's, you that's say that because we've seen a couple of 60 year old ladies leaving the house when we got here this morning. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> See, yeah. And then Simi was down there as well and another elderly lady had come swimming past and she goes, oh, you like your cougars, do you? <laughs> and, I said, and we're like, oh, easy because she, yeah. she was a bit older as well. I said, Steady we're love. just good people. Steady <laughs> love. No, I love that, man. And, you know, that's funny actually. During I, When ISO first kicked off in like March or April last year, I needed to get out of the house. I needed to start training again and getting a bit of exercise in my life and... Uh, carrying a bit of a dad bod at the time, I was about mm. 88 kilos. I should have been like 78. Um, and I was getting down the pool, just getting down in the ocean pool and doing a few laps. Yeah. And it's an old crowd down that's, there, bro. That's exactly, that's exactly what that, that oak park yeah, is. Yeah, it's just an old crowd, bro. And they've got a little crew they call the whales. They swim every day of the year. <laughs> yeah, grouse. And I used to just to get around and you just you go up and it's funny because they're so shameless. Yeah. They're 100%. And it's like, that's the beauty of the elderly, like that elderly generation is you're so authentic because you don't give a fuck don't, anymore. Like they just, they want comfort. Yeah. Like they just want to, they don't care how they look. They wear, doesn't matter yeah. what kit they're, they wear those like fucking little headgear things. And I'm yeah. like, you do you, you know? Yeah. Like, fuck. It's funny because I met a fella down at the pool. Maybe he's listening to the pod. I don't know. Um, he probably But is. his name is, they, I said to him, hey bro, I'm Brad. He shook his hand. He goes, Oh, they call me the beast. Didn't tell me his first name, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I see this guy all the time. He's a bit of a surfer. He, like, he loves to get out in the waves. And he's, you know, he's a bigger fella, you know? Yeah. He ain't your typical swimmer, but he's been in the water his whole life. And quite often I see him on a walk or a run in the morning. And I pass and I go, beast, how are you, mate? Yeah. And all the boys go, well, yeah. fuck, you don't know his first name. I'm like, I literally don't, yeah, bro. You don't it's just how to. he's introduced I'll himself. I vibe that. I proper yeah. vibe that, yeah. I nah, wish the, I knew the beast. The oldies are great, bro. The oldies are great. Talk to me about this new pursuit of, of life. We'll, we'll dive into footy a little bit at the end because I can imagine there's a lot of people who, I hope from my podcast, that come across and listen to you guys and you guys talk a lot of your footy and a lot of your sport. But I'm really interested to hear, like, you've, you've just gelled into this role really well. You're a natural at it. Well, th- yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, well, I, I think the, the best thing is, like, I'd never really seen myself doing anything like this when I first started doing it. Um, and then... We, I didn't really have any expectations when I started. Like, I was just got, because I was, I got, I had a bit of anxiety at the start. I was like, man, no one's going to want to like listen to me. I wasn't like a big name player. I didn't really do any like the media shows. So, like, I never spoke to like, I wasn't on the footy show or yeah. any of that sort of stuff and had that, that fan base. But Ice just goes, just come on and just try to be real, try talk about the things you're interested in. And if, and if people vibe it, they vibe it. If not, bro, like, that's it. That's sweet. Like, mm. it's not like he was going to sack me, but he goes, like, if it's not working, it's just not working. Yeah. So I think, I think that's the, that's one of my strengths is it comes over like a little bit authentic because I yeah. try, like, yeah. I only I talk about that. stuff that I want to talk about and, yeah. and like the, and you know, what I, the way I try to portray myself on there is like, you know, how I am. So, um, yeah, if it just keeps working out that way and I, can keep flying with it and potentially make make something more of it like that's one of my goals i sat down with ice a couple of weeks ago and we talked about a few things one being consistent and all that but ideally i'd like i'd like us at yktr sports now to be like self-sufficient where this is my only job because i do i do, yeah. do work away from it as well and ice just give me kickbacks for merchandise and sponsorship and all that sort of stuff that we're getting which is nice but it's great it's not enough to to pay the bills and all that so yeah. life's um, expensive isn't it yeah exactly man and the lifestyle that we can live sometimes, especially when you're living with, with yeah. a guy that's still in it, like yeah, um, yeah, we can we can uh, have a 
pretty lavish lifestyle sometimes and yeah. the restaurants and that and whatnot that we eat at. But yeah, if we can get it sustainable where at the end of the year, you know, I'm on a salary with YKTR Sports, like that's the goal for me, for me by the end of the year, yeah. That's really cool to hear. So let me just double check because you said there that Ice invited you and you started chatting. It's quite authentic and that's your approach. You're on his as a guest. Yep. Was that just the first step and then you've gone, okay, hold on, the response off this is there's a little bit of a place for me to start a show or was the plan always to start the show? Yeah, so because yeah, um, I'd known Ice for years as well. We'd, yeah. um, we'd known each other for a while. So when I was overseas, I was always um, would always come back and catch up. Like every off-season, I'd go away with the boys. If you look back, like um, some of the early vlogs, I was involved with the boys just in the background yeah, float, floating around. And then Ice goes, uh, when I told Ice I was back, I said, oh, bro, I'm pretty keen to come and look at the offices because they'd sort of blown up while I was away, while I was mm. in the Super League. And um, he goes, oh, yeah, come, let's, let's do a podcast and um, we'll chew the fat about because we both played at Wakey, the same, yeah. the same club, different times. Uh, he goes, come in and we'll do a podcast. And then pretty much after we finished recording the podcast, he goes, uh, we were sitting there just in the office and we went, uh, went out of feed actually after. And he goes, look, I'm, I'm going to start term YKTR Sports. Oh, he, we called it YKTR Media or something at the start and then he changed yeah. to YKTR Sports. He goes, bro, like, uh, come to a podcast with us and just see how it goes. So that's exactly how it went down. Like it hadn't even been released yet, but I think he just got a good vibe off the conversation. Uh, and then obviously knowing me for a while and... Like I would, we were in a few little group chats, and I'd always talk about sports all the time, and yeah, so yeah, that's how it started, man, and mm. and then it just sort of just kept on flowing. That's epic for anyone listening to this or watching. Um, if you don't know who Ice is, Isaac John, um, one of the three boys who started YKTI. You can go back and listen to episode twenty-one of the potty just for reference. Um, but dive in, you know, though, you boys are doing some really cool stuff. But that's one thing I really respect about your group is the authenticity, the way that you guys come across that. You know, some, sometimes it's hard as to, to really understand and put yourself in your shoes. Mm. As someone who's been outside of the game and hasn't ever had that exposure, the way that you guys talk about your experiences and you're, you're very real and you're not putting on a front. Like, that's, mm. that's a cool thing. You know, we sat down here before and you said, bro, you know, just fire anything away because that's what we're about. We're about putting that authentic stuff out. And, man, it's really refreshing. Cheers, it bro. I really appreciate refreshing. it. Let's dive into the sports a little bit. You, um, you yep. love your American sports. Love them, yeah. Your boys, the Packers, got my Rams getting a little bit back there. I was a little yeah. bit salty on that one. I yeah, we used a busted. You had a few injuries, yeah. so you had your excuses. We didn't have our excuses last week. Like We we should have got the job done, I believe, but bloody good, eh? Well, the thing is, you know, we'll be releasing this pod just post-Super Bowl. Um, it'd be nice to get your prediction. Prediction? Uh, well, yeah, so I'm on the Chiefs. I'm on the Chiefs. And I'm not being salty because... Uh, because of the show that I do now, I talk a lot about like American sports, and yeah. and I'll put like a few predictions out. The I cop a lot of flack for not really going well on the punt and sports punting, but one thing like yeah. I've been consistent at is going well in in the NFL. So like I've gave, I've gave a few like good future bets out in the past. Last year I gave out yeah. um, Lamar Jackson for MVP at yeah. the start of the year at like twenty five to one. He ended up getting it. Um, that's back, that's, that's back that's the a solid Chiefs. Bet. Yeah, back the Chiefs and the Forty ers So I had the two Super Bowl teams yeah, last wow. year. So you win, win with that stuff. And then I backed the Chiefs at the start of the year. Like, as soon as they won the Super Bowl, I was like, they pretty much brought back the whole gang. I was like, they're going to be hard to beat for a couple they of years. They look hard to beat, don't they? look very hard to beat. And it's the one scary factor is obviously Tom Brady's on the other side. Like, mm. for, the, for people that don't, aren't, you know, all that aware, with the ga- aware of the game, everyone knows who Tom Brady is and knows he's the GOAT. But he's not, he's not even really playing that great, like, at the moment in the playoffs. But his presence is just... He's got, like got this intimidating presence, just just sitting on the sideline, looking at his fucking yeah. little laptop and swiping. It's going just ice plays. in the veins, too, isn't it? Like when, you, when you've had that much experience, this is his tenth Super Bowl. Like you get to those moments in a big game, you're yeah, not, you're not sweating like your other QB is. You know, Patty Mahomes is pretty cool under pressure too. Yeah, I can be known to be a slight Chiefs bandwagoner at yeah. finals time. I do have a Mahomes jersey that usually features around Super Bowl yeah. time. He's hard not to love though, isn't he? He's like, just such a good such a good character. Yeah, hey? seems like a good dude. He, like he's gonna be going. I feel like he's gonna be like proper like we call him the baby goat. Like we feel like he's yeah. got next. But uh if this is like this is like your perfect dream scenario. Obviously I would have liked Rogers to play him but yeah. to see Brady potentially where he is now coming up against the next like it's for, cool for years i wanted brady and rogers to be in a super bowl together because yeah. there was always that argument well this is like five or six years ago now the argument's over like he's well and truly the goat but 
there was a time where I was like, fuck, I wish Rogers could get him in a Super yeah. Bowl and beat him. Yeah. And I never got the chance. So this is like the second best thing for yeah. me, I suppose. Why American sports? Um, I've always just been uh, attracted to the theatre of it all, I think. Yeah, I'm like, the same. The way that they, um, they can be themselves. Uh, yeah, the, you know, they carry on a little bit. I think that's funny. Like sometimes it doesn't appeal to like the, the, the Australian... Um, culture because we're yeah. we like I, I feel like in Australia in New Zealand we like the underdog culture and humble, humble and humility and all that sort yeah. of stuff but like um, you know when when I was like if, if we would be throwing the basketball uh, shooting basketball throwing the NFL ball around at training we're always like in each other's faces yeah. like Yahoo and like they do over there but when it comes to footy we're like yeah shake each other's hand and be yeah. cool and, and all that yeah. sort of stuff so it's almost like you get to play a character when you're it's like they're playing a character as well and then and building their brand and, and being able to expand on it, like outside of yeah. NFL. So, the Australian, I guess the Australian fans are so different. Like you said, we like that underdog story. And I can imagine, could you imagine if Normie ran out on the paddock, first game of the season, got the chalk and fucking threw it up in the air? Like, yeah. everyone would be going, What are you yeah, doing, mate? I know, yeah. But it's, it's like kind he, of. He can't, even, like, he can't even dye his hair and not cop a spray, you know? <laughs> fucking hell, I know, right? Yeah, he plays a bad game and, like, oh, I should have dyed his hair. Yeah. What? You know, you know what? It doesn't make sense. It's, it's funny, isn't it, the way that media perceives it? And you'd have, you know, how long did you play for? Played for six years in the NRL. Six years in the NRL. So you'd cop it here and in the Super League too. You have a bad game, then people see you out with a smile on your face the next day and they're like, what's he smiling for? Yeah. But it's a game of footy. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, you know, fans are passionate. It's a career. But if you have a bad day at work, it doesn't mean you have to be down in the dumps all fucking weekend. Yeah. So what do That's people expect you can't, the like, same? You can't lose. If, you, if you're going to layer up and you're going to do these things, me and Normie were talking about this recently um, on the back of some of the stuff we've been doing with like the uh, Prez, like Cam Munster and, mm. and the Cheese and everyone's celebrating them. They're going on benders and um, partying and having a good time after the grand final, but they won and they've got the ring. Yeah. But if someone else to do that, like... Just say, for instance, if Normie, because when Normie was doing that like four or five years ago, starting the vlogs of YK, everyone's like, oh, Normie's the gun, nearly won the, da the daily yeah. game at one point. And everyone's like, cool, but like if Normie tried to do that now, everyone would be like, oh, nah, like concentrate, yeah. like, fuck, you just had a tough season. Like, I, 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 you sort of understand it, but you don't. Like, yeah. they're, they're both playing the same sport, they're but like they're in different, completely different uh, systems. Yeah. One's got like, you know, Munster's obviously in a really good system, they've got, got really good players, they've got a strong base around them and normally they're in a rebuilding phase like yeah they've got new coach and all that sort of stuff so you can't obviously that's the betrayal of it all like uh yeah you've got like if you're going to layer up over here you've got to be winning man if you're not winning then yeah I've... whereas over there i don't think they fucking but like yeah. baker mayfield's been carrying on for like two or three years and they've just made, they just made the playoffs yeah. and yeah. odell beckham like he's one of the more popular guys in yeah in the nfl and i don't, I don't think he Fucking, he hasn't done that well in the playoffs. Like he's been injured this year and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I think that's the biggest biggest difference with it. Yeah, definitely. Talk to me about your time over in England because you know we see a lot of it, a lot of the NRL stuff in the Aussie media here, and you know you've explained a little bit what life's like here for you guys in Australia. But England's a different game. You know, my my coach and a mate of mine, Benny Seymour, played rugby over in. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So Benny. Oh, do you run with Benny Seymour on that day? Benny coached me to run my marathon. Oh, last year. gun. Yeah, yeah. So, I know Benny. I just trained with him at um. Raleigh Street Gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick, yeah. yeah Well, yeah. I'm actually, I think I'm catching up with Benny for a bit of lunch oh, after yeah. here today. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, he talks about his time over there and he said, you get to do a lot of traveling. It's great. Was it similar for you? Yeah, it was going. So I um, went to France first. Though. I was, I was, the first two years I was in France and then I went to the UK. It was such a cool experience. It was, per, it was the right time in my life too. Yeah. I went over there when I was 29. I had a bit of an itch. I used to see all my mates traveling all the time and never got to do any of those things, especially mm. during the summer. Uh, the, living in the south of France was like beautiful, beautiful, like the, the places that you can travel and just, you know, you know, I'm, I was, I was an hour and a half away from Barcelona. Yeah. Amazing. So we used to just drive down. Sometimes we'll get a day off and there was a real nice coastline down the, um, the North of Spain there as well that we used to get around like Girona and some of these places like that. Really nice, beautiful, like, um, picturesque beaches and whatnot. And then if we wanted to get, go travel, like it was a two hour flight, like it's like going up to Goldie. Like, yeah, that's it. So I took the, Footy, the footy um, sort of was a little bit on the back burner there. Like, you, you sort of go for the experience. If you're going well, like, I suppose, if you at some of the big teams, but when you're an overseas player and if the results aren't going you well, they can be can get a little bit narky over there. Yeah, okay. But it's the same thing. Like, the, the, you got to expect that, you know, obviously we're coming over there to play footy, but, like, the experience is a draw card as well. Yeah. 
And if they're just if you can find the right balance and you win some games, you can have a good time over there. But I loved it. Was the intention always to come home, or was there a thought for a minute to stay a few more years, just post footy? And um, no, I was always coming home. I was, the same sort of thing. Like once I'd been over there, I'd been over there for three and a half years, and then I I just knew like I um after the third year, the, the end of the third year, I was thinking, fuck, I'm, I might go home here. And I went, you know what? Like you'll regret this if you if you don't stick it out. Like yeah. just finish your last year and see how you're going because last year my contract anyway. And then I got about. 10, year, 10 games into the season, I'm going, yeah. Like, I'm, I know 100%, I'm ready to go home. So I, we ended up getting a release. We, we parted ways mutually with the club. Um, they were able to bring another player back over there, Kalepi Tangano, who's, who's done really well for the club at Wakey. So, yeah, it, it ended up like it was a really good experience, man. I got some really close mates from over those ways as well. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I can now fly over to France or England and, and stay, with, stay with some mates, like English, English and French. Like, yeah. that I've become really close with. So to build those relationships, those experiences, like some of those li- life lessons as well. Like, because I lived by myself a lot while I was over there. So this, I don't think I'd be able to do the podcast like I'm doing now, like if it wasn't for, for going over there. What do you mean by that? Well, because I was by myself a lot. So, you know, I talked about the speaking to the elderly down at, at the yeah. beach, like same sort of thing. Um, because I live by myself, I always try to make a point to go speak to a, a stranger every day. So whether it be the cafe mm. or cafe owner, or I used to go to the gym and sit in the sauna. And if an old guy's in there, I like talk talk about like well, you know, yeah. just go back and forth with them. And I did that because one, I was bored because you, like everyone else over, I was single, and then I was living by myself, and everyone else sort of got a family and mates, like they got their own mates. So there were so many days that I was just by myself. So I made an effort to do that. So that definitely brought me out of my shell, and you end up. Um, find out a lot about people, find out a lot about yourself. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just really enjoyed that aspect of it as well. It really, you know. Um, I used to be relatively, like, um, like cruisy. Like, it would take me a while to warm to people. But after going over there, I, I, like, living over there and doing that. I can imagine. It made me way more comfortable to do stuff like this. That's really cool to hear. You know, that's something that... Oh, I think that works for anyone in life, right? Like, mm. whatever job you do. I started life as a PT at, like, 17. And then into real estate, as we were talking a little bit about before. And, you know, to do what I do now, you, it's funny. You look back and you go, fuck, all those little moments. Mm. You know, getting a new listing, working with clients, meeting people, open houses, training people, avoiding for ages. It kind of works well to train you to what you do now. Exactly. We just get behind a mic and just chatting and conversation. So it's funny the way that life works mm. out. Yeah, they're all little lessons like all the way through. And you realize that as you get, get older. Bit of life wisdom, hey. Mm. Talk to me about for you. What what's the purpose now? Like I know you want to, I know you want to run your show. I know you want to be self sufficient with that as your as your sole source of income or your main source of income by the end of this year. But do you feel like there's a greater purpose? Something that you drawn? Is there a reason you're drawn to this? Um, well, yeah, it's 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 sort of like I enjoy people telling their stories. Like the, it doesn't feel like a job. Like I know, like it's not a job now, but like doing this now. And like meeting people and, and finding out about people like that. So I'm really attracted to that. Like yeah. Even sitting and doing other people's podcasts and getting them on and telling my story. I enjoy doing that now too. So I think um, like the fact that I get to make, have these relationships now with people through doing the podcast and we yeah. keep in touch and, and I get to bounce off people. And it, like, you know, a lot of the people that come on there, you know, whether it's a good, good story or, or a bad story, there's, there's a lot of life lessons in all those sorts of things. And, mm. I just feel like I keep growing as a person, like everyone I do, every yeah. every person I speak to. So I think it's just turning me into a better version of myself, really. So, Did you know, it's funny listening to um, one of the last interviews that Kobe Bryant done before he passed was with Lewis Howes. Yep. Podcast. And Lewis has got a great podcast, School of Greatness. And I was listening to that and I've listened to that a couple of times now. And he talks about transitioning out of sport and out of professional sport and what he wanted to do. And really started getting in the business of storytelling. Yeah. And his vehicle was, um, it was like children's sort of cartoon style stuff with life messaging in there. Yeah. And I think it's funny, whatever vehicle you take, you know, to be a storyteller, it's a privilege, isn't it? Yeah, it to, is, yeah. To be able to sit here and share conversation and share your own story. Yeah, for sure. Like just learning from people too. Like, you know, you might, yeah. not, need, not, might not need to go through something, but if you can listen to a story or sit here and, and we can bounce off each other. Um, yeah, there's life lessons in that as well. It's almost a podcast outside of the podcast too. Mm. Like I was with a guest yesterday and, you know, you, you always chat good conversation on a pod because you're there to get that information out, to share that story. But 
sometimes I find like that 30 minutes post or that little bit of time post where you're sitting around still packing up and you're having a chat. Mm. Like I was with a fella yesterday, he's the number one real estate coach in Australasia, Tom Penos. Yeah. And, you know, we spoke a bit of business stuff, but more life, I guess. <clears throat> For me, my podcast tends to be more about life and those little things that no matter who you are or what you do, you can draw from it. But Tom and I are sitting there and talking about some of the adversities that he's faced in life. Like his guy's had cancer three times. Fuck. He lost his brother two years ago. It was a two-year anniversary of his brother's passing yesterday. So yeah. I felt really privileged that he'd asked me into his home yeah. on that particular day. But you sit there and you think, fuck, this is a blessing. Like I learned so much from the people around me and it's, it's like an education. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, I'm exa- I feel, feel the exact same way about those sorts of things. You know, referring to that and talking about adversity, what are some of the adversities that you've faced whether it be your time as a footy player, post-career, that you feel have really shaped character? Um, I guess the with the footy career, the fact that I was like a... I always considered myself, like I said, a locker room guy, like middle-tier guy. Like nothing was guaranteed for me. So yeah. that's also helped, that's helped out with my transition and getting to like... From probably... I had a good... So even like when I first started, right, it took me... Till I was like 22 or 23 to debut, so I appreciate I appreciate the grind that it took me. Like mm. I fucked up a, a fair bit straight after I started playing 20s. I was partying and doing and carrying on too much and got in trouble a little bit. And then I really like had to focus in to originally debut. And then like nothing was guaranteed. Like I was maybe if I had two or three bad games, I was going to get dropped, and that yeah. happened in my career. Or potentially I wasn't going to be at a club, which ha- also happened at Parramatta. I had to move on because you know I wasn't playing good enough footy, so. What I, I learned to be resilient there. I learned to, I learned to take like it's it's quite humbling when mm. when the club bring up like your manager calls you and they go, look, you've got one year left on the contract. But um, Ricky Stewart was the coach at the time and he comes in. He goes, he's a new coach. He goes, look, we're not going to use Justin next year. So if he can find another club, so you, you learn to deal with adversity yeah, through throughout your career and you take a few no's and they, you get kicked to the ground. You feel like shit, but fuck, you got to keep fighting. Like you got to find. And then I go to Manly, and then I'm refocused again. I have a fucking good preseason. Everything's going well. We make the grand final, and I'm back, like, and I'm feeling rejuvenated. And, yeah. and the same sort of thing. It comes to the end, and Trent Barrett comes in at Manly, and he's like, I, this, time, this time it wasn't like my contract was just expiring. But he's like, look, we're, we're going to go a different way. And I'm like, oh, fuck, what am I going to do now? So and then and that's when I end up going to the Super League. Yeah. So you go through all these, like, ebbs and flows, and... You know, like people think it's glitz and games, glam. For for some of the guys, yeah, like some of the guys are on good money, but they work hard for that. Like, oh, bloody hell. A lot of the guys that are at the top, a lot of the middle tier guys are like me, man. Like, you, you're fighting for your job all the time. Sometimes you there's a period for, you know, when, when everyone becomes off contract and you're waiting for the dominoes to fall. Like, mm. all right, so fucking, you know, there's times where I'm waiting for Luke Lewis to make his decision at Cronulla before I can, before a club's going to go, well, we're going after Luke Lewis. Yeah. Now we're going to, like, then they start going down and they're like, Justin Hurry's now in the conversation stuff like that. Okay. So you can go through six months where you're like, fuck, I don't know if I'm working next year. Like, I don't know if yeah, I've got hard. a job. That uncertainty. That uncertainty, man. But I appreciate that now. Like, it's so much, like now that, you know, everyday work, like it's the same as, it's the same as life after, after footy you go through. Like, and you know, I'm doing a job with my uncle now. It's like, it's not glitz and glam, it's just like park and patrol stuff. And it's, a, it's another life lesson. Like, you know, it's, it's very humbling. People come up and like, you know, you're in the high vis and all that. But like, I love it. I love it because one, it's I've got to be humble. Like, I've got to pull back. I get to do things like this, which are cool too. Yeah. But like, there's humility in it as well, and um, not knowing when the because it's all like part time stuff as well. Yeah. So Shout out to the traffic boys. My old boy does a bit of cash. Oh traffic yeah, grass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Boys. So I do like the parking patrol stuff before the the traffic controllers come in. But um, yeah, like. I think lot, footy set me up for that, like to be able to, because some some yeah. guys like you know, some guys can't handle like some footy players don't want to do that because they're like, oh, like I'm I'm above that, I'm like fuck, you got to make money so, somehow. And it's a conversation I've had, you know, I was speaking to Fooney um, about it on the way up here and and in the past days, like I'm in that period now where you know we're speaking, I do this for a living, like this is mm. how I make make my bread now, and. It's, you got to humble yourself, bro. Yeah. Like, and I try to do a bit of casual work where I can. I try to use my other skill sets, you know, it's auctioneering where I can and, and do that sort of stuff too. But it's crazy because you go from being comfortable and, you know, I was on a comfortable living for a long time there where I didn't have to worry about going to a brekkie or going to a dinner. Yep. But I said to a few people, like, I really embrace the struggle of the finance yeah. now and that struggle because I know on the other side of it, 
Yeah, it's, you know, it's that saying, Gary Vee. I don't know if you watch Gary Vee much, yes, but he talks so about it all the time. When you're from, you've come from the dirty, you've come from a hard situation, yeah. and you have to learn, it sets you up for success. Yeah, it does. Because if life's easy all the time, you get hit with a bit of adversity, but you don't know how to get off the canvas. Yeah, exactly. And so, that's, yeah, it's exactly so I'm t- totally agree with you. Like, and, and that's why like this, this year is so exciting for me. Like, it, last year was a pretty tough year. Like financially, I'm pretty sound as well. So I don't like, realistically, I don't need to do it, but like, I don't want to be hitting like such my savings and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, of course. Um, so, but like, yeah, I like the life lessons that are in like the parking patrol. There's life lessons in um, doing the podcast. There's like yeah. life lessons in just chatting to people down at the, so everything, everything's a lesson for me, man. That's like, that's the sort of vibe I try to do and try to be, like I said, try to be grateful for everything. Try to, try to learn as much of, of anyone that I can. Yeah, of course. Young or old, so. Of course, a few gems of wisdom in there. Talk to me about dynamic, bro. We're, we're here in the house where it all goes down. Yeah. You four boys living together. I know. I watched a bit of 10 in the can and yeah. it's, um, it's quite funny to sit back and watch the, the balance between you boys. You're different personalities in a way. And what's the dynamic like in the house? Yeah, it's, it's very... Um, yeah, it's like, actually, it's, it's hard to explain. Yeah. It's hard to explain. We're all very different, but very similar as well. Yeah. Um, four four people is is pretty hectic sometimes mm, i think since since chico's moved in as well in particular um him and simi have got like a little bit of a rivalry happening at the yeah. moment like they're yeah. especially in the group chat they can be um uh going at each other a fair bit i'm always trying to bring it back i'm always trying to you know talk about being positive i think simi is too as well but yeah um they're just having like we're sort of on top of each other a little bit like this place is nice and big but it's pretty crammed upstairs. Yeah, okay. And we're all right on top of each other. Like, all the rooms are right next yeah. to each other. And um, and then, like, dating. Yeah, like, you want to hope the walls aren't too thin, eh, bro? Yeah, well, <laughs> not, not even that. Like, just the, the way the boys can act sometimes when a girl comes yeah, around and just okay. changing it up and trying to be funny when they're... Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that sort of shit. Like, so I think Chico gets into Simi a little bit about, like, being a, being lovely and and carrying on a bit. But, yeah, it's fu- it's always fucked. There's always something something yeah. going on in this house. And Chico's probably a good giggle. signing for you boys. He's pretty good in the kitchen, isn't he? Oh, fuck. He's unreal, man. Yeah. He, like, even, like, because he's, he's got his own help yourself uh, vlogs that he's yeah. going to be bringing out and doing more of that stuff. But, like, he can even cook something basic and it'd be, like, really good. So, yeah, he's been a great addition. He That's gets it. He, he, he uses fucking every pot and pan and dish to... So, when you're, like, because he cooks, we all got to do the dishes. Yeah. And he's quite... um animated about making sure that we clean it's up i'm a tuna and rice guy bro oh uh, yeah so one bowl, i'm one simplistic packet. bro like yeah. i can we me and before like simi and chico moved in it was just me and normie and we'd do salmon broccoli and sweet potato yeah keep it simple like that was our vibe i might do some spaghetti bolognese and it's like yeah. short and sharp and we just cook and clean but chico uses the entire kitchen and we appreciate that from him i'm very grateful but it's when it comes to clean up yeah. time Actually, a little tip for Chico, you know, followers of the pod would know if you follow me on social, you'd see the daily PB and poachies on toast, a um, bit of peanut butter on sourdough with poached eggs. Yeah. It's, it's the grouse, eh? Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. But actually, Benny Seymour got me onto it. Okay. So Chico might have to whip up for the boys. Yeah. Well, Normie reckons, he's, that's his secret recipe for everything, Normie. Bit like of peanut butter? Bit of peanut butter. Like, yeah. I'll be like fucking making toast and he'll go, bro, trust me, a little peanut butter. Like, it's like something yeah. new. Like, yeah. Bro, relax. Like everyone's yeah. had peanut butter on fucking toast before. Just not. Nah, <laughs> everyone's me, got bro. a bit in the cupboard. Eh? No, nah, trust me, bro. So we take, we take the piss out of him with that. That's epic. Hey, you boys have got some fun times coming up this weekend. I'm sure it's Normie's 30th. Yeah. Yeah, it was his 30th on Wednesday. So we had a nice dinner on Wednesday night. Um, we've got a bit of a crew together. We're going to do a bit of a pitch and putt in the morning, sink a few beers, find a. I think we're going to head over. We're heading over Manly Ways over the Northern Beaches. Nice. Yeah, just to mix it up a little bit. Uh, Normie, Normie's been talking about going over there for for a minute. Is the WhatsApp group's going off there, so I think yeah. we're talking about where we're going to go. Very nice. But yeah, it should be should be a good weekend. Yeah, bloody hell. Get a couple of hotel rooms over there, and because yeah. um, fuck, it's about an hour and twenty minutes or whatever to get over there. Oh, you know, I talk about good times, Hoz. You know, we're sitting here on the table. There's a big bright orange box sitting in between us. If you're seeing it, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'd see it's the Gune box. If you're listening to this, well. Gune is Australia's tastiest premix party punch. Gune combines delicious melodies of orange and raspberry flavouring, making it perfect party wine for all occasions. If you're in the market to save some money and make some memories, 
then Gournay is here for you. For 20 bucks, you get 30 standard drinks, which is insane. That's drive away, no more to pay. Gournay is ranged in over 100 stores now, so check out their socials at Gournay, which is G-O-O-N-E dot wine. And make sure you get to their website to check out your local seller. I like I like the fact that it's classy as well. Like the little um, you know what they say the little accent on the end. Like I lived in France, so I can appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, you can you appreciate know, that. And you know yeah. what they say: stay classy. So yeah. <laughs> get after it, everyone. Get after Burgundy's, it. It's, um, uh, drink of choice, I think. One hundred percent. And you know, I feel like people invest in companies they know about. So you know, the the founder of Gournay, Ty Grieve, as we call him, Fooney, the man's actually here in the flesh today. Um, sitting behind the camera. We've got an episode on the pod, I believe it's episode 31. You can probably confirm that, Fooney. It is. So jump in, have a listen. But, bro, really appreciate you you coming on the show here. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm really a fan of what you're doing and I'd love to stay connected with you boys and, and the journey that you're on. It's, it's a nice dynamic. It's really good to see guys breaking out and changing the scene for footy players. I want to talk about that scene a little more, you know, I, oh, actually, here you go. Here's hmm. something that's just come to the front of my mind. I don't even know if you remember this because that's just come to mind then for me. When you first come back, I remember you going on ISIS pod and you spoke a little bit about maybe some aspirations to start like a sports management company. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is that in the wind now? Um, a little bit now, yeah. a little Because when I come back, I um, when you first come back, because like, I, I thought about doing it for, for a while but because I didn't really have anything that interests me outside of like a footy at the time well, was everything was based around footy so i was yeah. like i i knew that there was a market there like it, it the where the management companies could be improved of you know not necessarily with my management company they're always pretty good to me but i know of other guys that had sort of been done over and mm. managers sort of just you know sort of come in and take their cut and then you know once players are done they they put him to the side and then they concentrated on the next young kid. And I thought like there was a market there to, to do that right. I still think there is. I think there are some, a lot of, a lot better people. I'm getting Brayton Astor on um, yeah. my podcast coming up and he's doing some stuff with it now. And I think he's, from all, from all reports, he's doing a really good job with them. I'm, I'm excited to talk to him about it actually. That'll be pretty cool yeah, to talk to him. Definitely. Because it's sort of like, a, it did get put on the back burner yeah. when, when I, because I was going through the process of like, all right, so what's the accreditation uh, process? Um, you know, starting from scratch and started, I was, I was speaking to mm. a few younger players and people that have reached out to me and then we started doing this and I went, all right, well, let's just see how this goes, like like yeah. I said, organically and how it flowed out. But I'm really I'm really keen to speak to Braith about it really. I yeah. think, you know, you will get a, we'll get a bit of a gauge of it. You know, if you, like you said, if you're following our stuff and listening to that, I'll chat to him about how he's been going. He's been going for a couple of years. He's got a few golfers, a few rugby league players. Because he's a bit of a, a good amateur golfer, eh? I remember he, he played a tournament I can't remember what the tournament was at Wollongong Golf Course a while back. So yep. I used to live right near the golfie there. Yep. And um, I remember there was a bit of hype around Braith and Astor coming in and putting on a polo and swinging some clubs. Yeah, well, I think he used to be off like single digits, like <coughs> handicap, yeah, well. which is obviously really decent if you know golf. Yeah. He plays a fair bit. Uh, yeah, I think when you know, obviously <coughs> when he started playing footy, he, he wasn't playing as much, but um, he's definitely within that scene. He's got a few good golfers that have been coming through. He's... The, the best part about, I suppose, about him and why I'm excited to talk to him because he's so self-sufficient now as well. Like, he's, you know, he's doing well with Fox Sports and financially he's in a good spot. So he can really, like, actually be that, that sort of manager. And Isn't it nice to see that, right? Yeah. Like, to see guys post-career. You know, that's, it's the reason I first reached out to you because I was like, there's potentially a mix here. Like, I was in the real estate game negotiating. Yeah. You had connections. You you had the know how of the game. Yeah, and I think I hit you up to try yeah, and get yeah, yeah, meeting right. like, yeah, yeah. like this year sometime. Bro, the only reason like I didn't follow up is because like I just goes yeah. let's start doing this stuff. And, then, and to like, be honest, my life's changed. Yeah, yeah. Me too, off the back yeah, of funny. this, so it's um it's funny the way that things change, man. The way yeah. that one connection with a meaning in the beginning has ended up us yeah. sitting here shooting shit on a potty. So yeah, it's um want to make sure that people can find you, dive into your content, bro. There's heaps of good stuff going on in your socials daily. How many subscribers of the pod now? Um, we're trying to get to twenty k. I don't know where we're, like we're we're pushing that now. I think that's a that's really good to hear. Eh? Yeah, that's solid. Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, I think we're close. So I'll go in and do a podcast again today. We'll do a bit of a Super Bowl preview. Um, but yeah, it's going good, man. Like we've we've got some pretty cool um, ideas coming up and different shows and trying to be branch out to a bigger audience now. Like we've got a pretty solid base. Of support and followers that have been with the YKTR boys for a minute, and I like to think that you know myself and and Simi and Finchie was doing a little bit of work with us and brought some new ones yeah. on and 
and trying to obviously keep them engaged while also trying to try to get more of an audience. Yeah. But we're, yeah, we're happy with the way it's going, man. And for, for everyone that's listening, um, you can find you on Instagram, underscore the scope. Is that right? Yep, the scope. The scope. The scope on podcast apps, Spotify, and under the YKTR banner on YouTube. Scope, do you mind looking down the barrel of that camera there and giving the people some wisdom to finish it off? Oh, wisdom. Um, well, my roommate Simmy's there in the background. Have you got uh, what's some wisdom? Any wisdom for us? Any wisdom, Sim? Or well, you're going to do your own one. I'll let, I'll, I'll let you. Can I? <laughs> wisest yeah. he's very he said on the most wisest person he's ever he's, he actually um, said I, he's know, the most look, wisest cunt so I, I, mate we've we've gone over it a few times I, big thing is being grateful grateful for everything you got in life at the moment that's honestly it, it started, started off as a bit of fun with the boys but since I've introduced that into my life I honestly it's it's funny like you you might say I might you know, joke, not even joking around, but saying grateful for the elderly. When you start like saying that stuff and you hear yourself say it, like something comes out of you when you, mm. um, when you're grateful for things and you know you start thinking about you know other people in less fortunate positions. So be grateful, stay humble, and uh, keep getting after it, baby. Life short, guys. Live every day like your last. Mm-hmm.